Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come. Yes. Uh, uh, verse 11, uh, with those that shall come after. Yes. I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. Oh. <laughs> Must have been Solomon. Yeah. Because it says it's son of David. Yes. And I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. <laughs> this sore travail hath God given to the sons of man <laughs> to be exercised uh, therewith. Yes. <laughs> now, uh, this wisdom, yeah, a lot of people don't search it out. <laughs> um, I've kind of looked at it a few times, and I've seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit <laughs> that which is crooked cannot be made straight and that which is wanting cannot be numbered <laughs> i communed with mine own heart saying lo <laughs> i come to great estate and have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in jerusalem <laughs> yea my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge and <laughs> i gave my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. <laughs> now, this idea of madness and folly, yes, this is something a lot of people don't get to experience. <laughs> I perceive that this also is vexation of spirit. <laughs> See, let's say you thought that you were divine. Yes, you were a saint, and you could do anything that the other saints could do. And <laughs> you thought, well, why don't I go praying for people and laying hands on the sick and <laughs> doing all kinds of kind of weird saint type things? <laughs> a long time ago, I was studying the lives of the saints and I had a little talk with myself about this whole idea of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I used to jump in the middle of drug deals and say, well, it's time to pray, everybody. And they would look at me like I was fucking crazy. Yeah. Eventually, I realized that it doesn't work the way that I thought. <laughs> I had a lot of personal life experience before getting married. Yes. And I had accepted that there is what's known as Holy Ghost burnout. <laughs> See, I had studied, yes, a lot of those that had very large congregations or those in Zion, yes, those that started cults, yes, those that thought they were the second coming of Christ, pooch. And eventually, yes, I realized that there was a, a very good way to do things and a, a very bad way. Yes. Any individual that tells me that the Lord told them something or the Lord showed them something, I have a difficulty with that. So, the Lord really doesn't tell me anything. But then I thought, well, if I pray, right, and I really think about God, there could be some wisdom or some knowledge that I, I get, yes, that God didn't tell me and God didn't show me. Now, uh, let's say it's a fireplace. It's anything that uh, actually has heat in it. <laughs> and I had a large amount of garbage, and you decided to go online and give me the dimensions of what you wanted. And, <laughs> well, I heated up some garbage in an autoclave at approximately 2,000 degrees, and I had a computer that could mold it into any shape that I wanted. Poop! <laughs> and I said, well, I will send you a molded, yes, recycled garbage mm -hmm, insert for whatever whatever you want it for. Yes. That is fire resistant to 2000 degrees. Right. For X number of dollars, it's probably like, well, considering it cost me nothing to manufacture it <laughs> because of the electricity that, uh, that the steam produces. Yes. I'll sell it to you for a million times the actual amount of manufacturing. And since it cost me nothing, <laughs> I could give it away. <laughs> Now, wouldn't that be something, a charity that gives away recycled garbage because of the amount of electricity it produces? <laughs> now, for a lot of those that are in the boiler making business, I've known a few boiler makers. <laughs> they have to put these fire bricks in there and it gets real hot and then it has a radiating system for some of these older buildings. <laughs> And the thought of putting in an additional uh, amount of insulation that does not erode, because fire only gets like 500 to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. 
fire bricks, yes, I could redesign them. Now, <laughs> I could uh, incinerate garbage, yes, I could, <laughs> using a ramjet incinerator that I myself designed. <laughs> and the dust, <laughs> the ash at 2,500 degrees because of the steam-generated electricity that it manufactures, I could design a fire retardant brick that does not cool down for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. <laughs> There's a possibility, yes, there is, that if I did this the way that I know it could be done, no, he doesn't know it, yes, I do, that they could have an insert, yes, and fire bricks manufactured from the incineration of garbage that would not only be ret fire retardant, yes, it would retain the heat once it was heated up so that it had a very slow cooling cycle to entrap more of the heat available to heat, uh, well, radiated heat or any sort of heat source that you want. Yes, good, yes, good. Now, I know you'd say I'm overpricing it at a million times of actual manufacturing costs. Yeah, 